Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this little bottle that my friend Jennifer gave me. And I almost think this bottle doesn't need anything. It's a really pretty bottle. But I'm going to give it a simple little bake over. So I'm going to start with some slick stick. And that's a Dixie Bell product that just helps paints uh, stick better to slick surfaces. So you could use a clear spray here or a, a clear base coat to help this stick of any kind. Um, this is just what I have, so I'm just using slick stick. Um, then I'm going to give this two coats of the color buttercream. And that again is a big Dixie Belle color. Uh, I just give this two coats of the color buttercream and then let that dry well. And then once this um, dried well, then um, then I'm going to uh, put some wax over it. And um, I thought about just using a clear wax here, but I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of dimension in this color because you have all these little grooves uh, that a wax could settle into. So uh, I decided to use... Um, some clear wax and mix uh, in some some of the color sea glass in it so i think i did about half and half on my mixture but i'm just brushing this on and wiping it off and it won't make this uh, the color sea glass but it will have a hint of that color and then a little bit more of the color down in the grooves but I just kind of brush that on and wipe it off and I do that to the entire bottle and I decided that I wanted to put a little stamp on the little area in the middle uh, but I changed my mind on that because I didn't like how that looked and I ended up uh, gluing a piece of uh, lace around that center instead because I felt like it needed something, but I didn't want to do anything that was overpowering to it. And because I used slick stick here, then I'm able to rub on this without rubbing any of this off. If I hadn't used some sort of base coat when I went to wipe this wax off, this being glass, it would have wiped down to the glass in places. And some bottles I like that look on but not on this one I didn't want it on this one so there I am covering up that stamp that I didn't like and then after I got this glued on then I just take that same color of buttercream and paint over the top of this and I could have left just the cloth look here um I guess in this case maybe I couldn't have because my stamp showed through just a little bit but a lot of times I like to put lace on a bottle and then paint it. And it changes up the texture of the cloth. It takes away that cloth texture and just kind of gives your bottle the texture. And so, like I said, I just paint over this with the buttercream. And then once that dries, then I just take that a small brush and just lightly brush that colored wax over it so that it kind of blends with the rest and I really like the look that I got here so now all this little bottle needs is a little hang tag and I'm not making the hang tag on this video but I will attach a video where I make several hang tags and they're very very simple to make so uh, and I think they make a really big difference in these little bottles so the next item that I'm making over is this old window and I'm giving it a good cleaning because it was very dirty and uh, I want my paint to stick to the window because I'm going to be adding some paint to the front and back of this so this will be the back and um, I'm taking the color buttercream and painting directly onto that window uh, two coats of the color sea glass and that's again a Dixie Belle color so generally uh, using uh, paint on glass I would use a slick stick or some sort of base coat to help it stick but this is going to be the back of the window and I just felt like that um, that it's not going to get 
any wear and tear. So uh, once I put two coats on this, uh, I think it will stay well, especially since uh, by the time it's really touched, it's going to have plenty of curing time. And I would normally um, paint a top coat over my chalk paint. But again, that's just going to be on the back, so I didn't feel like it was necessary. Um, and now I'm giving this uh, the window frame on the, the side that I'm going to be uh, using and painting two coats of the color buttercream. And then I'll let that dry well, and then I'll take my orbital sander and give it a good distressing. So I distressed it down just as much as I could get it. And, um, and then I'll go over that with some clear, uh, some clear top coat. So um, I'm just using a Dixie Belle top coat. I'll just brush over the top of that. Now I could use a clear wax at this point, uh, but um, once your paint finish is finished, you need to you need to seal it with something. And now I'm I'm going on top of this glass. Now the paint is in the back, so I'm just painting raw glass here also, and. Um, I could have painted the paint on the front, uh, but I just like the look of the glass in front of the paint. So I'm just taking this little stencil here, and this is one that I got from Amazon, and um, I'll try to locate that, uh, a link to that, and put that in the description. But I just put that in all four corners. And then this is another, um, another stamp or uh, stencil that I got from Amazon and I'm stenciling this uh, in the center and because of that little mutton I have to stencil some on top and then some on the bottom so this is a little bit tedious to work with but it worked out fine and then once I put this this stencil on then that's all that I do to this window I could um, add a, a clear matte spray at this point to seal this um, and I may do that uh, I haven't decided yet but I may do that the only thing is it's going to take this glass from being shiny to to more of a matte finish and it will almost look like a frosted glass but it will protect this paint well so I'm probably going to have to do that and then once I finish this one, then uh, then I can move on to the next one. And the next item is going to be this little lamp. And um, this lamp is a um, a very simple little lamp. Uh, so I, I'm not going to have to do much to this one. I'm just going to paint it in the color sea glass. Uh, I feel like it needs a little character added to it. So I'm going to give this two coats of the color sea glass. And then once I let that dry well, then I'm going to um, add some um, white wax to this. And that will uh, tone this color down just a little bit um, and give it a little bit more dimension. And also, since I didn't uh, let this dry overnight or I didn't use a slick stick on the bottom, when I go to wipe this off, if I put a little bit of pressure, then I'll get some distress down to that dark color, which is what I'm going for. And uh, so now I'm sealing this and distressing it in one step. And because I'm getting a little hooked on the distress ink, then I, I decided to do something I haven't done before and use it to um, to tone this down instead of using a glaze because normally what I would do is use some Van Dyke brown glaze on this and um, and then that would tone this color down but I thought that just using this antique ink uh, with this little foam brush would make this a lot easier now i don't know how well this holds up that's the one thing i haven't tried it on um, on a, a hard surface like this but i have tried it on paint and it works out really well with paint because the paint really grabs the color and it doesn't wipe off so my guess is when i go to wipe this off later with a 
damp cloth, it's it's still going to stay put. So we'll see. And if I have a problem with it not wanting to hold on, then I can always spray this with a clear matte sealer. So that's all I'm going to do to the lamp. Uh, but now I need to make over the shade. So this shade is in really good condition. So all I'm going to do is just tie some strips of fabric around it and let the knot uh, show at the bottom. So I'm using strips of fabric that I've ripped and strips of lace that I've cut. And I just tie those all the way around until I cover the shade well. And then I'll cut the length where I want it when I'm all finished. So this is one of the simplest fixes. It takes a little bit to tie those around, uh, but it doesn't take very long. And you can use strips of sheet or tea towel or, uh, or an old um, curtain panel. Uh, you can use just about anything as long as you can make a strip and tie a knot in it. So I just tie this all the way around and kind of distribute my lace and... Uh, and strips of fabric until I get the whole thing covered. And then once I got this covered, my first plan was to just kind of let these knots hang and add some rosettes. But I decided that I wanted to add a little bit frillier touch to this. So I had thrifted this lace and, uh, well, I didn't thrift it. I actually got it in an estate sale and I thought it would be perfect to add to the bottom of this. So I just glued that around just above those knots, and then once I get it glued all the way around, uh, then I just cut the knots off underneath it so that none would be showing uh, beyond the lace. And then uh, I'm gonna add some rosettes to this, and I'll somewhat show you how to do them, but I can attach a video where I do them in, in detail and I'm going to be doing these with the fabric called Warm and Natural. And this is a, kind of a bulkier, soft fabric. But it works really well to make the rosettes. And because it's a substantial fabric, it, it uh, doesn't take a lot to build a rose. So uh, I really like using this. And I'm just going to build these all the way around uh, and just glue them around the top of this lace. And uh, this Warm and Natural can be found, I get mine at Walmart, and it's found where you find the quilt batting. And um, I guess maybe some people might use this for a quilt batting, uh, but this is called Warm and Natural, and it comes in a bag. And this particular fabric can't be ripped, so you have to cut strips of this, but it's very easy to cut. And I just really like to work with it. So once I get these roses all around the bottom, uh, then I need to add something to finish off the top. But first I'm going to show you some close-up of how I make these roses. And I just uh, glue a little knot in the center. I tie a knot in the end of my string and then glue that knot in the center on a little piece of fabric. And the fabric... Uh, it's just a little base to work from. It's going to be hidden. So I twist my fabric uh, a couple times one way and maybe a couple times the other way. I like to uh, twist it back and forth because I feel like it gets gives more dimension to your flower. But a lot of people just keep going in the same direction. So that's fine too. I just personally would rather twist it both ways. But that's just how you make them. And I glued them around the bottom. And now I need to finish off the top. Uh, so I'm just taking some of the thin lace that you get from, uh, or narrow lace that you get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to glue that all around the top, just right up against the edge. And that will give that top more of a finished look. And then that's all that I'm doing to this lampshade. And I think that really made a big difference in that little simple lamp that didn't have any character. And then for the next item uh, that I'm going to make is um, just this book stack. And uh, this is going to be a very simple book stack. Um, and I like the book stacks, but I want them simple. I usually don't like to put much on mine. And I like to take the book jacket off, so or the book cover off. So I like the look of these old book pages, and I like that 
top page so I'm going to make this the bottom and I'm just going to glue these two books together and then take this wide lace again one that I thrifted and just glue that around the center and like I said I'm keeping this very simple so I just take some hot glue and glue that at the bottom and then I'm just going to wrap some uh, or tie some uh, strips of fabric and lace around it. So like I said, I just flip that over and cut some strips of lace and rip some strips of fabric and tie those around the center. And uh, give this a shabby chic look, but it'll be a very simple look. So you could just tie this around and stop there. And then this could be just used as a riser because you don't have anything on top that's going to keep you from being able to uh, set something on it but i wanted to add more to this one i still want to keep it simple but add more so once i get all this lace tied around and i don't bother tying a bow on it i just kind of tie it in a knot and just kind of let it hang and again you could stop here and i like the look of this also but um, I decided to add this stamp, and this is one that I thrifted. It's this, this little corner row stamp, and I use it a lot um, on corners, and I thought it would be perfect for this little book stack because I could still show that front page. It wouldn't take away from that uh, aged front page that I like so much, uh, but it would just add a little extra decor to it. So I just stamped these on. And then, again, I could stop here, uh, but I wanted to add a little bit of floral to this. So, I just stuck a few little stems of um, lavender in this, and I didn't, I didn't glue them because I wanted to be able to remove them when I wanted. And I think that simple little fix of these books made a cute little book stack, and it's very shabby chic. And you could change out the colors if you decorate with a different color. And so now here is the part of the video where if you don't want to see Christmas this early, you can just go ahead and stop. But if you want to see a Christmas ornament, then I'm going to be adding this ornament. And I'm starting with this pretty little box that I got from uh, the Dollar Tree. And I, I like this box. It, box it's very cute. But I don't want cute here. I want shabby chic. So, and these scallops are not going to work for the ornament that I'm making. Although I do like them. Uh, my first plan was to cut them with a um, utility knife. But I thought that was too dangerous. And decided to just take some scissors and cut it. You're not going to get a perfect edge. But that's not going to matter for the one, for the uh, ornament that I'm doing here. And this had some uh, glitter on the top, so I had to sand that off, which means I'll probably be wearing glitter all day. Uh, but it had to go. So, um, and now I'm taking some uh, some tacky glue and gluing this uh, closed. And not because I need extra security to hold this closed, but because I wanted to soften that transition of the lid. I just decided to go over this with some um, some masking tape and I'm going to be painting over it anyway so uh, it's not going to show and uh, so I'll give this two coats of the color buttercream and then let that dry well and then um, I'm going to make if you haven't guessed and you probably haven't uh, because uh, this is going to be a shabby chic ornament uh, but I'm going to make it look like a little suitcase. So, uh, so I took some cardboard and cut out a little handle and cut out a little plate to go underneath the handle. And um, I'll, I'll show that closer here in a little bit. But right now, I'm going to uh, glue some uh, lace all the way around it. And that's to kind of hide that transition and hide that tape. Uh, and I know that most suitcases don't have this, but I felt like this one needed it. So I'm just gluing this lace all the way around this little box. 
And then once I get this, this uh, lace secured all the way around, then I can add my handle. And this is where you'll be able to see it closer. So I just took some cardboard and cut a little plate to go on the bottom. And then I took some other cardboard and made a little handle and glued to that plate. Uh, but I painted the plate with some metallic paint and I just used some bronze colored metallic plate and glued, I mean, and painted that and then glued that on the top. And that'll just be that little plate that your uh, handle is connected to. And then I just glued my little handle there to the top. And now it's starting to look a little bit like a suitcase. Uh, but because um, I always use my antique uh, ink, I'm going to use that and just kind of antique this up a little bit and just kind of brush that on. And then once I get this antique the way I want it, uh, then I'm going to uh, use my set, uh, my stamp, clear stamp set called I See Paris by Redesign and um, use a couple of those stamps and stamp on the front and the back. Now these I purchased from Etsy some time ago and I don't think they're hard to find. Like I said, they're, uh, they're by Redesign. Uh, and they're called I See Paris. And uh, they just have this, a really shabby look to them, I think. A really shabby chic look and French country look. And so I'm just stamping one on both the front and the back. And then I think that quickly, uh, this is starting to really look like a suitcase. And it's becoming so much like I imagined it would. So, um, this is definitely one that is easy to do, and I feel like pretty quick to do, and maybe some of you wouldn't think that this is very Christmassy, but it is very shabby chic, and I think if you were doing a shabby chic tree, this would be really cute on the tree, but now I need a way to hang it, so uh, obviously that little handle is not going to work. So, and I don't want to take away from the look of it. So, I am I just glue a clothespin on the back so that it can hook straight onto the tree. And because every piece of luggage needs a luggage tag, then I just made a little hang tag that kind of looks like a luggage tag and tied that on the front. And then this is making me think uh, about how cute it would be to do a whole set of luggage like this. So now I'm on the lookout for one of the little square uh, overnight uh, suitcases. I think that would make a really cute one. Uh, but I really like how this one turned out and I like the vintage look of this vignette and the colors for me are, I just really like these colors. And as you can see, this simple little lamp that had no character is just full of character now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.